And we are ready for the shootout round. And Danny Wiseman, the fourth seed, will be up first. 31 years old, 12 years as a pro, native of Baltimore, Maryland. One of three right-handers in our championship round today. And Wiseman starts things out on the right foot with a strike in the first frame. A confident opening shot for Danny Wiseman. Wiseman followed now by Tim Chris. As you see, the second seed, 16 years, a pro. Coming in light, but getting the friendly roll of the two pin. Able to get the head pin off the sideboard, coming back, just knocking out the two pin. Very fortunate. Shot a little light in the pocket. He'll go harder and straight at the 10 pin, and no problem. Tim Chris converts the spare in his first attempt in the shootout round. And that will now bring Mike Miller onto the approach. Mike from Albuquerque, New Mexico. And the third right-hander in our shootout round. All three of the bowlers in the shootout round. Bowling from the right side. Mike, 6'1", 200 pounds. 38-year-old. And a great start for Miller as well. So a couple of strikes by Wiseman and Miller in the first. Chris opens with a spare. And here is Danny Wiseman now for the second frame. Wiseman had laser surgery last fall, and that has really helped his game. Has not had to wear glasses or contacts, and I don't know if that had anything to do with it, Marshall, but Wiseman opens with the front two. And Danny Wiseman has changed to go a little more toward the inside of the lane. He was playing in practice from very, very far out on the very right side of the lane down by the channel. He's moved his line in a little bit. As Tim Chris gets ready to throw his second shot. And Chris in the second frame gets on track. Come on, Mike. Mike Miller, who revolution who revolutionized the thumbless shot in the PBA. Tell us about that, Marshall. Well, as you can see, he just, he palms the ball, and it's, it's really amazing. It takes a lot of strength and a lot of very, very good timing, but it enables him to throw a powerful delivery, as you can see right there. So Miller opens with a couple, and we'll take a look at that thumb again. Once again, he palms the ball, takes a lot of very, very good strength, and, and he practiced it for many, many, many months before trying it on tour. Used to throw the ball very straight, now he's a power player. Now Wiseman up in the third. And Wiseman remaining perfect through the first three frames of the shootout round. Tim Chris now finds himself down early by 10 pins. And Tim Chris comes back with his second strike. So Chris with a spare and a couple strikes through the first three frames. The ball of Tim Chris, solid in the pocket. All the pins taking care of each other. Confident shot, first double for Chris. Other two players are perfect. Mike Miller does have a win on the tour this year, earlier. Title came in the Don Carter PBA Classic, and also Mike Miller opens up. He is perfect. We've got a tight one. Danny Wiseman and Mike Miller are tied through three frames of the shootout round. We'll be back. Danny Wiseman and Mike Miller presently tied for the early lead. Now for the Friday night recap, where the position round determined who made today's TV finals. And it was Ricky Ward who really just took care of the field in the final game, shooting a 290 to secure the number one spot. And Danny Wiseman, he needed two strikes in the 10th frame and some bell. He took care of business. The confident Danny Wiseman. And in fact, Marshall Wiseman's second ball strike in the 10th frame took care of Mark Williams, who dropped out of the championship round. Tim Chris won four of his last six matches to qualify as the second seed. And that's this week's Friday Night Recap. And we'll take a look at the 
tournament stat pack, and you'll take a seed to hear that the average to cash and the average to make match play very, very close, only one pin different. Philip Keane III is president and CEO of the Reno Sparks Convention and Visitors Authority, and his organization has helped make this event a most enjoyable one for everybody while we stayed here this week at the National Bowling Stadium and in the area. Great job. Through three rounds of the shootout. And Mike Miller and Danny Wiseman tied. Tim Chris down by 10. Wiseman will start things out in the fourth frame. Infant and the reaction of a thankful Tim Chris. Well, Chris with a lucky one in a town that you want to be lucky in. Mike Miller now in the fourth frame. He also perfect through three. Make it four. Wiseman and Miller. Nothing but strikes. Danny Wiseman, his TV record phenomenal. The highest winning percentage, best amongst the active touring pros at 673. And every shot he's thrown has been flush in the pocket. Can he do it again? Danny Wiseman yeah, feeling baby. it. Danny Wiseman getting it done. So Wiseman with five to open up the shootout round, keeping the pressure on the other two players, Tim Chris and Mike Miller. Tim Chris now up in the fifth frame. Next year, his friends and family will be able to wish him a happy Father's Day. His wife Sherry just found out recently that she will have their first child. And Tim leads the 10. A soft 10 for Tim Chris. The ball coming in just a tad late into the pocket. Wasn't able to get the six pin to come out of the channel to knock down the 10. Well, don't forget, you can access all the latest information on the PBA by checking out the PBA's website at www.pbatour.com. The site, sponsored by Brunswick, features the latest news, tournament standing stats, and scheduled live chats with the pros. And an easy conversion for Tim Chris. So he will remain down to both Mike Miller and Danny Wiseman through five frames. Miller with four strikes in a row, finds himself 10 pins down to Danny Wiseman, but with a strike here, he can even things up with the front five. Oh, did you see that? What a break and a little dancing music for Mike Miller. Miller playing to the crowd, he loved that shot. No, he knew he also got a little bit lucky as well getting everybody worked up here. Well, he leaves a solid 10, but what comes back off the wall? I'm not even sure what it was. I'm sure Miller doesn't care. He's just happy to have it. And when he gets happy, he gets dancing. <laughs> he gets very happy. <laughs> now maybe feeling a little bit embarrassed. It looks like his face is turning the same color as his shirt. Wiseman and Miller are even up. Tim Chris, 21 pins down. And Wiseman had to delay his approach as the uh, crowd was going a little bit crazy for, for Miller. See if he can regain his composure on the right-hand lane. That'd be a yes, affirmative. Six strikes in a row. Danny Wiseman in a groove. Ah. And here's Chris working on a spare obviously with our other two bowlers showing nothing but strikes chris has to begin to do the same <laughs> and the 10 for tim chris and the same shot that he left last time with the ball just coming in a little bit light in the pocket not able to get the six pin out of the channel to knock down the 10 as the other two players watch and contemplate what might be for their next shots So Tim Chris converts yet another spare. Coming up next, rivals Jimmy Connors and John McEnroe do battle in the finals of the Quality Challenge right here on CBS Sports. Mike Miller needs to answer Danny Wiseman. Tim Chris down by 32 pins. Mike Miller presently down by 10 to Wiseman. But if he gets this, and he does, we're evened up once again. 
And these players aren't just striking, Gary. They're striking with great shots, high flush pocket shots. So through six frames, Mike Miller, Danny Wiseman are dead even. Tim Chris will have his work cut out for him as we move through the shootout round. And talking about the first match of the championship round, we have a couple of possibilities as well here. Marshall, Danny Wiseman, Mike Miller, six strikes in a row for each. Well, they both have the opportunity to, to shoot 300, but, you know, when it's $10,000 for a 300 game in the shootout round, but they're not thinking that. They're trying to win this match. Right now, it's all tied. So make it seven now for Danny Wiseman in the shootout round. He is hot. The good projection for Danny Wiseman. You think he wants this seventh strike? He says yes. <laughs> and now Tim Chris in the seventh, down by 32. And Chris is bowling a very, very good game as he sticks up his hand and says, that's one for me. But he's getting run over by Wiseman and Miller, who have yet to miss. And right behind Tim Chris, a shot of wife Sherry there briefly. Again, they found out just recently they'll be having their first child. confident strike from Mike Miller as he acknowledges the crowd. Someone right in the middle of his approach said, two fingers, baby. That's all it takes for Miller. Well, you know, if a 300 game is bowled during the shootout and two guys with that possibility right now, the bowler will receive a $10,000 bonus from the PBA. Front seven for Wiseman. Left off his hand. Will it hold? It does. Danny Wiseman putting on a show today, and Mike Miller knows that he has to stay right with him. Uh, and Wiseman was very fortunate. The ball was left off his hand. You can see the reaction. Beautiful form from Wiseman. Reaches out way out on the lane. Fortunately, the ball held the pocket, able to strike. Tim Chris now in the eighth. And with that strike, Tim Chris still has a possible 258 game. So there's a there's a slim chance that Chris is still involved in this match. Strike fever catching on here. Tim Chris now has put together a couple. Mike Miller in the eighth frame. It shows him down 10, but of course, if he makes this strike, he's dead even once again with Danny Wiseman. Well, it's got to be a lot of pressure having to be the one coming back and answering Wiseman every time. Can he do it again? He does it. Come on now. Mike Miller now, also perfect through eight frames. And Marshall, there was some question, the fact that the tournament proper was held the normal day is Thursday and match play ending on Friday night, that with a day off on Saturday, this being a Sunday tournament, these guys may come out a little bit cold. That is not the case. Yeah, you, you think Wiseman and Miller lost any momentum? I don't think so. For nine. Came in light. Light off his hand. He had the two, the four, the five, and the eight. Fortunately, as we're going to see right here, the bucket is standing two, four, five, eight. There goes the four pin into the five, into the two, into the three. He's got nothing but the eight left. It's fortunate just to have one pin, but there's the opening that Miller needed. Wiseman now for the conversion of the spare in the ninth frame. He'll pick that up. Solid eight. Well, for in-depth sports coverage with late-breaking news, Jeez. live scores, exclusive columns, and more, go to cbs.sportsline.com or on America Online, enter keywords CBS Sportsline. Tim Chris working on a pair of strikes. For any chance, he has to have it. He's got a hook. And he comes in light and leaves the two and the eight. Damn. Maybe just a little too much speed for Chris. That That's bad. the way he gets his ball to hook back up in the pocket. Doesn't, doesn't do it with power. He does it with his fingers and the slow speed is Mike Miller sitting, contemplating his next shot, knowing that he's one pin up right now, one pin up to that man, Danny Wiseman. Chris converts the spare, the 2-8 spare. Mike Miller, the only bowler of the three in the shootout round, with an opportunity to pick up 
Well, some extra pocket change. Marshall, $10,000 from the PBA. He needs four more strikes to do so. Well, with a strike here, it would put him up by 11 pins, and it would also give him the hammer going into the ninth, going into the tenth frame. Still, the game he wants to win. He's not thinking 300. He's thinking beating Danny Wiseman. It's a solid strike on lane 25. Mike Miller, nine consecutive strikes. And obviously looking to move on to the championship round. And Wiseman, if he strikes out, it would force Miller to get the first strike of the tenth. So very important to strike here on the right-hand lane. He comes in light again, but he splashes the pins around. Wow. And I think what's, what could be happening is the, the, the lane oil has a tendency to carry down as the game progresses. Now, this ball comes in light. Very fortunate. He just sort of tickles him over. You'll see the reaction of a very pleased, thank you, Danny Wiseman. Wiseman may not be able to control his own destiny, but he can certainly put the pressure on Mike Miller. Slower speed left off his hand. Not only doesn't he strike, he leaves the four, the six, the seven, and the ten. And now for Danny Wiseman, he could fit, pick Should've two of these up. In, dumbass. Shoot, pick up two of these pins and shoot 267. Mike Miller in pretty good position. Careful. Wiseman sticks at the line. Nice. Only gets one, shoots 266. A fine effort from Danny Wiseman in the shootout round. Here's Tim Chris in the track. Come on. Leaves a rocking 10. <laughs> and for Chris, it'll be no better than 225. And really, bowled a good game. Wiseman has got to be very disappointed with his second shot in the 10th frame. And it really gives Miller a much easier road to the, to the championship game. Tim Chris finishing out. His shootout round in the 1999 National Bowling Stadium Open. One more shot for Chris. Yeah, that's, that's solid nine. Tim Chris pulled a very, very good game, Gary, but boy, he just oh couldn't get the carry. Yeah. 224 for Tim Chris. <laughs> Well, here's the situation. Mike Miller, front nine. Feet of the strike on this, on this frame right here. The first ball of the 10th, he's going to win the shootout round. And then he can start thinking about shooting 300. One more good shot. That's all he wants. And that wasn't just a good shot, Gary. That was a great shot. The best shot he's thrown the entire game. Having one day off no. certainly did not affect Mike Miller. High flush in the pocket, and Mike Miller, what's he thinking about now? He's thinking about 10,000 reasons why 300 would be a good thing to do. Two more strikes, he's got it. Taking a little extra time. Just needs to maintain his form. Every shot, high flush in the pocket. Will it fall? It does. A very light right hit. Takes care of the 10 pin. Will Mike Miller be the 14th player to shoot 300 on national television? Well, Marshall, the 13th was right here in this house last year. Watch that 10 pin. What a late kick of the 10 off the 6. Right now, he's not sure. Just does knock it down. Last year in the Masters here at the National Bowling Stadium, in the shootout round, Parker Bowl in the third rolled a 300 game. Will we have our second consecutive 300 in two years here in Reno? He did it! And yes, we do! <laughs> Mike Miller has not only won the shootout round, he's 10 
defense by Mike Miller. We don't need a calculator for that. It's a 300 game. And you know the pressure was on Miller here. He already had the shootout round wrapped up. And that ball right through the pins gives Mike Miller the 14th televised perfect game. Right now, we're going to go down to Marshall, who's standing by with Mike Miller. Marshall? Thank you very much, Gary. Mike, 300 game, you, you were so composed. I mean, how do you feel? Well, you know, obviously, I'm very excited to do something like that. There's, there's been so few people to have a chance, even have a chance to do that. So I just want to say hi to my daughter and my son and my wife, and uh, happy Father's Day. And, and it's just been it's awesome so far. But I got another game to bowl, so I need to check it out and chill out. Well, you, that's, the, that's the right thing to do. Relax yourself. Get ready for the next game. One more game for Mike Miller. Chance to win this tournament. Already history made with a 300 game. Gary? All right, Marshall. Talk about a happy Father's Day and a happy father right there. CBS Sports coverage of the 1999 National Bowling Stadium Open will continue after this message and a word from your local station.